Chris, Mike Shea, I'm the owner and operator at Fusion Welding and Fabrication, also a part-time welder instructor on my local college. And today we're going to be going over what I think is the very first step in wanting to get into welding, whether it be a hobby or your next job, and that is some welding safety. By the end of the video guys, I hope we'll be going from this over to this. So here I'm just doing a quick weld with all my welding PPE on. As you saw there, I have my steel toes, my denim pants, I have my welding shirt, my gloves, and my helmet. And that's everything I need to be able to do a weld safely. We're going to be going over everything in detail and give you a little explanation of some of the gear I wear as well as why I wear it. Starting with my steel toes. These are boots designed specifically for welders. What they do is they help to keep sparks and other hot items from falling on top of your feet. Okay, unless you're only doing TIG welding, you never want to have a steel toe shoe. You want to have an actual boot that comes up a little bit. Okay, this is really important when working on job sites when twisting or breaking your ankle is very possible. This is going to give you a little bit of added support. For pants, you want to wear any sort of denim or work pants. The most important thing is you want to avoid any frays or rips as those are great spots for fires or burns to happen. And you always want to stay from any sort of plastics, okay, like polyester and things like that. What happens when heat goes to those is they melt and this is going to cause a really bad burn. Same thing goes for your t-shirt or whatever you're wearing under your welding jacket. You want to stick to things like cotton. They're going to help protect you a lot more. Alright guys, moving up, the next line of defense is our welding jacket or our welding shirt. Now this is what I like to wear about 90% of the time. It's great for fabrication work and light welding. Now this is quite a bit heavier, it gets very hot, but also offers much more protection than my actual welding shirt. This is great if I'm welding out of position or I'm in a tight spot where I'm very close to the arc. Now the other thing some guys offer is just welding sleeves. Those are also great because they're very lightweight and offer maximum breathability but they do only protect your arms and they leave your torso very open to burns and spatter. Yeah, we want to make sure that we have a good quality welding glove because it needs to protect us when we're right close to the arc. So these are my TIG gloves and they are quite a bit thinner than my make stick gloves. Reason being is I don't need that extra thickness to protect me from the heat. And I also want to be able to move my hands a little bit better to control that TIG wire as well as the TIG torch. Now these are my make and stick welding gloves. Again, very similar to the TIG. Completely made out of leather, but they are much thicker. They give me a lot more protection from the welding arc and the heat, and that's why they're good for processes like stick, MIG, or flux core welding. The other gloves I see sometimes that I don't have on me right now, kind of those big oven mitt style welding gloves. Those are really good for doing any hot processes, burning a lot of flux core wire, or doing a lot of stick runs. Now moving up guys, to our last line of defense, and arguably the most important, this is my ESOP welding helmet. It's an auto darkening welding helmet. What that means is that I'm going to be able to see even when I'm not initiating the welding arc. If you're just starting out, you don't need something like this. You can go as simple as a fixed welding helmet. There's no headgear like my other one because it just clips on my hard hat, but it's a great little welding helmet. Okay, the drawback to this one is that you can't actually see anything until you start the arc. It is always at a shade 10. You can still use it for grinding flips up and you can see through it like that. And the nice thing about these is the price is much cheaper. Okay, we're gonna look over two welders I have in my actual shop here. I'm gonna go over one of my MIG welders as well as the stick welder I have. The safety for both of them is relatively the same, but it's good to go over both of them and see a few key differences that they have. It's so Lincoln Wire Matic 255. It's a bit of an older machine, but you know what? It's done great for me. So, looking up here at the front, I want to go over everything here. It's my ground cable, my spool gun, as well as my regular MIG gun. What I'm checking for is that all of those things are in good working condition. And more importantly, I want to make sure that everything is fully insulated. Okay, that means all the parts that conduct electricity, as well as the cable itself, should all be covered. Any frayed or broken parts need to be replaced. Now, moving to the back here, taking a look at our gas tank. I want to make sure that this is secured properly by the chain. It's not going to be going anywhere while we're moving it. These falling over is very dangerous, but since they're under very high pressure, if the top ever breaks off, they can turn into a missile. Moving up to our regulator here, I want to make sure that our regulator is in good working order, all the parts are in good condition, gauges are both reading accurately, and that before turning the gas on, we have our pressure fully backed off, and we can slowly introduce it to a safe working pressure. After that, we come down to our electric cable here. Same as the front, we want to make sure that all parts are fully insulated and that no bare wires are showing. Taking a look at the plug, making sure that everything is on tight, 
in good condition. Okay, when these are plugged into the wall, there's still some electricity flowing through them in some cases. And depending on what we're working on or what we may accidentally touch, we do run the risk of giving ourselves a bad shock. So whenever we're working on these machines, whether we're blowing them out or changing a part out, always make sure that it's unplugged and turned off. I'd like to introduce you to my engine drive welder here. This is my Lincoln Ranger 10,000 Plus. It's actually the first welder I ever bought. It's been a great machine for me. Anyone looking to break out on their own or start a side hustle, highly recommend starting with an engine drive welder. Get one of these, throw it in the back of your truck, you're going to go and start making some money. I'm sure you notice there's a lot more cable on this than the MIG welder on the inside. This is my rolling them at the beginning of the day. I'm just going to take a look to make sure everything's in good condition. If I notice any wire showing or frays, I'm going to do the necessary repair before starting it up. Put it down, I'm going to take a look at my ground clamp. Make sure everything's snug and in good working order. Then come over to my stick whip, electro holder, stinger, whatever you like to call it. Make sure that it's in good working order, everything's fully insulated, and that no internal parts are showing. One of the big differences I had between this welder and that MIG welder I showed you on the inside, this is an open circuit machine. When I turn it on and flip it into stick mode, it is always going to be live. Because of that, we need to be very mindful of how we handle this machine. Whenever I'm changing electrodes out, it's important that I'm wearing a glove to create a bit of a barrier between me and the actual welder. You want to be careful where you set this and you always make sure that you never become part of that electrical circuit. So what is electricity? Electricity is really just a form of energy. A form of energy that powers our everyday lives. Now, what do we need for this? Of course we need something to power. It can be a power source. And we need our conductors, like copper wire. And this allows for our electricity to flow through and power our items. And this is what we call a circuit. Now, we can change the direction that this power flows depending on the current we're using. Direct current positive, direct current negative, or AC power, or alternating current. But in welding, we actually use all these currents, depending on the application, material, machine. What happens if I break the circuit? I have opened up the circuit, the conductors are no longer intact, and this is not working anymore. Insulator is the opposite of a conductor. Conductor are things like metal, copper, and anything else that conducts electricity well. Insulators do not conduct electricity well. What I think comes to mind mostly is rubber. Now, I try to piece everything together and show how that actually all relates to welding. This is basically how arc welding works, and it's just another electrical circuit. We have our power source, i.e. our welder, our ground cable, our lead cable, working against our conductors, and of course our workpiece, which is whatever we're welding at the time. Now we can change the direction of how this current flows with the currents we have, DC positive, DC negative, and AC current. And the way it works is the current will flow through either the lead, the ground, or back and forth if we're using AC. We will strike an arc on our workpiece. We will then create a slight gap in between our electrode and the workpiece. This gap creates resistance because of the air in between the two. And that resistance in turn creates heat, which is strong enough to melt the electrode, as well as the workpiece, thus creating a weld. The one thing we need to look out for is the conductor. Now, electricity will always take the, the path of least resistance, and in this case, it would be the copper going to our metal piece. However, as soon as we introduce ourselves to this path and become part of the circuit, we very quickly can become the path of least resistance. How does that happen? You decide not to wear an insulator. Maybe you are right here, I'm about to grab your electrode right here without any gloves, and then you decide to put your hand on the workpiece. You have now just become that path of least resistance, and you are part of the circuit. So now instead of this electricity flowing through our conductor and into the workpiece, it is now flowing through you into the workpiece. And this is how we get shocks or electrocutions and welding to become quite dangerous. Something we always need to be aware of and protect ourselves from. Avoid welding when wet. Now this does not just go for us being wet, but we also want to be careful when welding in wet conditions. Water is a better conductor of electricity, and if we're covered in it, we have a higher risk of being shocked. Try and remain dry, and if we are welding in wet conditions, wear proper insulators. It's also a great idea to try and keep our cables out of the water. Of course, this is sometimes difficult with the conditions we work in. When you're on job sites, pipelining, these conditions are often very wet and muddy, but we want to try and do our best to keep ourselves safe. Up next is ensure proper insulators are always used. This goes for our cables, make sure they're always intact and no copper showing. The stinger or MIG gun should always be in good condition with no internal parts showing. And we should also be wearing our own insulators, our welding gloves, our proper boots, up next, always avoid touching live parts. Now, of course, this goes for our uh, 
cables, as well as our electrode, but also working inside the machine. Make sure your machine is fully unplugged. This completely eliminates the risk of being shocked, and it's a good practice to have. Coming up next, have a good ground. Now, what does that do? Well, having a good ground allows for the current to pass through freely for whatever we're welding. There's very little resistance, and the path should be relatively clear. When not having a good ground, we have a higher chance of us becoming that path of least resistance. Avoid touching the weldment. Now again, this may not always be possible, as oftentimes we like to prop on whatever we may be welding. But when we do so, make sure we're wearing the proper insulators. And if we can't avoid touching it, please do. It will just keep you that much safer. Yeah, just to finish us off with a couple things. Clear safety glasses should always be the first step when never doing any kind of shop work. I also like to carry a box of earplugs in my shop at all times. It's great for doing any grinding or any other work that's a little louder. A fire extinguisher is a must, but at the very least, you should always have access to a bucket of water and know where the nearest hose is. A first aid kit is yeah, not a bad idea. As safe as we try to work, mistakes do happen and we want to be ready for them. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Shay with Weld.com. Happy welding, guys.